Hello, everybody. Welcome back in for another episode of the Fourth and Long Winded Show podcast YouTube channel. My name is Dan. And I'm Cody. And we're here to talk to you about the coaching carousel. We're going to do some grades. We're going to talk about whether we like the hires, whether we don't. Um, we were going to talk about this uh, a week and a half ago when we recorded last. However, uh, we weren't sure if the coaching carousel was actually done because there was a lot of a lot of uh, stories surrounding Brian Harson and Auburn, but those seem to have settled and gone away, and he might be keeping his job. So here we are. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna run through mostly Power Five uh, coaching hires. We'll probably touch on a couple of the Group of Five coaching hires um but uh cody cody how are you doing today and are you ready to talk coaching hires i am well and yes good good to hear we're gonna start off at the university of virginia they hired tony elliott uh former clemson offensive coordinator um i think this is this is an okay hire for this is a slightly above average hire. Um, I think this is a great hire from the perspective of Virginia. Um, I think getting somebody this high, yes, very good um, hire. But I'm not c totally convinced on Tony Elliott as a coach because um, we saw this past season that the uh, Clemson offense took a major, major dip um, after Trevor Lawrence is gone. And I'm not completely sure that he can run an offense that doesn't have a star quarterback at the helm um, like he had at the the previous five years at Clemson. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on the UVA hire? You know, I think that this for for Virginia, you have to say that this is a successful hire because Tony Elliott really should have had his pick of programs. And for me, it's a little bit of a confusing hire if I'm being honest, because like there were a lot of jobs this year that went open, and I don't know, a lot of them were. Bad better than Virginia as a job. Not to say that Virginia is a bad job. It's just not like a top 10 job. It isn't. I don't um, even know if it's, it's not the top job in the state even. Exactly. Like Virginia Tech came open this year and I think Virginia Tech is a better job. Um, so yeah. It does I, I seem, it does seem like he picked Virginia because yeah. he's had a lot of opportunities to leave these past couple of years, and he hasn't. He stayed at Clemson, um, but Virginia is the one that kind of gets him to be like, all right, now I'm going to leave Dabo. I'm, now I'm going to leave Clemson, and I'm going to leave for Virginia. So it, it, it doesn't scream a place where you want to leave for. Like, that's, that's where I want to go is Virginia. Um, it's not a bad program. It's not a great program. Um, it's middling at best, but I don't know. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with all of that. Um, there's a possibility that maybe Virginia's like, hey, we're going to give you more control than, than the other places we're willing to give you. We're going to be able to increase the budget, you know, yada, yada, yada. We don't really know all of those details and what the conversation was. So maybe it really is a perfect fit. Um, for me... From an outside perspective, looking at the whole picture, I also give this like a B plus. I give this a B plus just because I also don't really know what Tony Allen is going to be able to do. Um, you mentioned uh, the the quarterback situation that he had at Clemson, and it was w wonderful. And one might say, well, you know, Deshaun Watson has had some behavioral issues at uh, Tech at the Texans, and and uh, behavior. And we don't really know what what his ceiling is in the NFL. And uh, what's uh, the other guy's name that I'm uh, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence? Trevor Lawrence uh, has only been in the league one year, and you know, uh, struggled. Um, it was a bad team. He was surrounded by a bad team. I don't. He's I, don't, not I, don't I don't want to cross off Trevor Lawrence's yet. And we know what the yeah. ceiling of Deshaun Watson is. I mean, he's he, when he was playing before he had behavioral issues he was one of the best quarterbacks in the in the entire nfl so um. yeah and so like i'm not saying that it, it may be maybe it's the other way around maybe it's quarterbacks are elevated by tony elliott and it'll be successful um maybe the recruiting that he brings to the table is going to be able to take virginia to the next level 
He is a very I good recruiter. It, it, it is entirely possible. But for the fit, it like seems to me like uh, you would want a guy that's that's elevated other programs from yeah. where they were to where they couldn't be before. That's the kind of guy you want for Virginia. And Tony Elliott isn't that person. I agree with that. Um, all right, we're gonna try. I gave. I didn't give you gave your grade a B plus. I'm gonna give this one a B. Um, but let's let's move on to Notre Dame and Marcus Freeman. Um, so this one's a little close to home for you, Cody, as Brennan or as Marcus Freeman is a former uh, UC Cincinnati defensive coordinator. Spent last year as the DC for Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, and then took over as interim head coach and was named head coach. Um, I like the hire. I don't. I'm not jumping like, oh, he's going to be amazing because I don't know because this is the first ever head coaching job. I think he's got other tools. He's a great recruiter. Um, he the players love him, and he schematically on defensive side of the ball at least is extremely good. Um, I'm. It's it's just a little different when you're running an entire program and you get a little bit more to worry about. Um, so I think it'll be interesting to see how he does these first couple of years. I completely agree. I think that anyone that has doubts, it's it's warranted just because anytime you hire from within someone that hasn't been a head coach, yeah, it's it's a different ballgame. Um, that being said, um, had this played out like I think Notre Dame would have wanted it to play off and Cincinnati wasn't in the playoffs and that whole situation, I think they would have went for Luke Fickle. I, agree. Um, I don't think Luke Fickle was interested in the job because of timing, not because of anything else. Um, I thought that honestly, like Notre Dame and Ohio State were the two jobs that I thought Luke Fickle would leave Cincinnati for. It didn't happen because I think Luke Fickle just, you know, didn't want to leave during the season and that that speaks volumes about his character. Um, but that being said, if it would have played out that way, my first pick for Cincinnati's head coach would have been Marcus Freeman. He elevated the recruiting at, at Cincinnati to a level that we had never seen before. It's been elevated since, but, you know, that's incredible to see. Partially He's due also- to him because the recruits that he brought in made the team more successful, and now they're a more appealing place to go. Exactly. He coached every single one of those players that was a difference maker on that defense that was the reason they were in the college football playoff. Um, so he's a great developer and analyzer of talent. Mm-hmm. Um, at Notre Dame, he has the backing of the team, and that's huge. When you're coming into a situation, it's going to be a similar culture change. And I think that that really sta- speaks to... Notre Dame's ability to continue on in this where in this successful era of Notre Dame, because I honestly think Notre Dame's the last 10 years have been some of the best years for Notre Dame. You may argue if you're a Notre Dame fan that, you know, you haven't won a national championship, but like you're, you're damn near close and you're you're making the playoffs. Yeah. You're, you're regularly in the conversation. You're where you want to be. And I think that, Marcus Freeman was a great choice to continue that ascension. That's, um, that's, I agree. I think if nothing less, he keeps the train moving where it is. If not, I think he has the potential to elevate them to where they're seriously contending for national title. Because they've been around the conversation in the last 10 years. They've made a couple national titles. Um, but I don't know if we've consistently looked at Notre Dame as like, all right, they're a national championship contender year in, year out. Um, and I, he has the potential to bring him to that level. Just and he's a flashy he, he, hire. Like he's a little bit more of a flashy hire, even though it's a from within hire. He's um, good. So he's good on the interviews. He is good in front of the camera. On the interview, exactly, and and that that's also going to mean that he's going to be good with the uh, alumni and the boosters of Notre Dame. Yes, like all of those things play a factor. And yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much more time. On this, uh, I could make points on it forever. I think this is a good hire. I give it an A, um, I, I, just because of all of that. Uh, obviously, we will see how it actually plays out. But based off of everything that I know and everything that I've seen, this is a really logical, sensical, good hire. That's right. I, I'll give it a B plus. Like just because of it being a first time head coaching hire, and I, I think it's the right decision, right time. I just don't think it's a slam dunk, per se. So I'll give it a B plus. Um, moving on to the guy that uh, Marcus Freeman replaced, 
Brian Kelly has taken the job at LSU and he is awkwardly dancing with recruits on tiny little stages um, and then losing those recruits to Alabama. Um, that's how his tenure at LSU has started. And um, I don't know what to think of this. I'm very unsure about this hire. So I should I should start my little thought on this with just saying I don't like Brian Kelly. Um, I don't like the way that Salty he Salty Cincinnati been, fan. I, I just don't like the way that he's progressed through his career. He just is very shady with the way that he, like, moves on, you know, Overnight. committing and saying, I'm going to be here forever, and then the next day cutting out and taking the check. I understand I would do the same thing. However, in this business, it's just, you got to kind of play it off. Like, I'm not going to be here forever. I'm here until the next opportunity call. Yes. Be a little bit more upfront. Just don't come, actually, just don't go all the way to being like, I want to be here forever. Just you, There's no reason to say that. Why are you saying that? I get that. Yeah. Unless you actually do want to be here forever. And which then like, which case money doesn't matter. You don't even yeah. take the interview. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, On a positive so, side, he has won everywhere he's gone. Uh, he won at Cincinnati. He won at Notre Dame. You'd think there's reason to believe that he'd be successful and win at LSU. Um, the only reason I'm doubting it is because it just it doesn't feel right for one. I know that's great analysis, but it, it Brian Kelly at LSU just doesn't feel right. Um, there's going to be pressure put on him at LSU that he has never faced before. Like he, it's pretty clear he made this move to win a national championship. That's really the only thing he hasn't done. Um, and that that's the one main goal of this move to LSU. And the final thing of the, the pressure is like, he's stepping into the most, not let alone conference, not the, the most competitive division in all of college football. Um, he's going to be playing Alabama every year. He's going to be playing Texas A&M every year. He's going to be playing Ole Miss every year. Every Arkansas is on the right. Like there's so many, so many great teams in that Western division that it's going to be tough for him to win year in year out. And I think, I don't know. I'm just unsure. It's interesting to me that they hired someone with the goal of beating Nick Saban that has never beat Nick Saban. Yes. Well, to be fair, um, a lot of people have beaten Nick Saban. And that's that's a perfectly reasonable statement. However, they've played each other enough to say, yeah, Brian Kelly does not have the game plan game against Nick Saban. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I agree. Doesn't have that advantage. Um, that being said, I know head to head, like whatever, you know, the level of recruits, level of whatever. I also agree that while it isn't great analysis. This just doesn't feel like a great fit. It doesn't feel like Co Coach O when Coach O took over. It's yeah. like your cringy uncle got hired on at your school as a janitor. Yeah, the, those those video recruitment videos are not helping. I think this this mindset not. that they have. And then he's not getting those recruits. It yeah. would help if he actually got the recruits. Yeah, but he's not. Yeah. We will obviously see he has a star-studded staff there. He's filled it with great staff. Um, uh, his offensive coordinator is the offensive coordinator from Cincinnati. Um, he's, he's, he's spent money. They've spent money to hire a great staff there, which I think is something that maybe Notre Dame wasn't able slash willing or was maybe a little reluctant to do. Um, and so I think that that, might have been another factor in this. I give this higher for the flash factor and who Brian Kelly is. I'm giving it a B just because of, give it. like all of the unsureness of this, like sure. It looks like a slam dunk on paper. I just don't trust it. Not to mention he was their third choice. Like they really wanted Jimbo Fisher. Yeah. Jimbo Fisher didn't come. Yeah. They also really wanted Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley didn't come. All right, fine. We'll take Brian Kelly. All right, we'll give him a bunch of money and see how he does for a couple years. I'll give it yep. a B. We'll see. We like, like you said, we'll see. Um, we'll be saying that all about a lot of these guys. Um, next, let's jump to the SEC East Division and Florida, who has what made 
one of my favorite hires, if not my favorite hire of this coaching carousel in Billy Napier coming over from Louisiana. Um, he did, he did a great job with Louisiana turning them into a formidable program. Like Louisiana, these past couple years has been sneaking into that top 25, been very competitive. Um, I think this is just a slam dunk hire for Florida. Um, they've, tried these kind of out there coaches and Jim McElwain and Dan Mullen these past couple of years and it just hasn't worked and Florida's kind of sputtering and I think Napier was the right call here bring a little sense of normal I completely agree I think this is one of the better if not the best hire um of this offseason uh I think I like the only place that I think would be a better fit, and I have no understanding as to why they had no interest in him, was LSU. LSU, yep. Like, I think, I honestly, like, if you're LSU, you are whiffing right yes. now. Like, this was an idiotic move. He would have liked to be been at LSU over Florida, mm-hmm. in my opinion. He has the the recruiting contacts. He recruits the state extremely well. And he's in your backyard. Mm-hmm. no love lost louisiana is not going to be mad about it like no one's mad about that yeah they're going to get a payday out of it <laughs> exactly um that being said florida good 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 on florida they they made a great hire um i like billy napier a lot i'm uh i'm a little sad because i don't particularly like the florida program so i'm gonna have to root against him a little bit um but that is what it is um so yeah this is an a plus hire for me a plus for me as well i think he's gonna do really well and maybe provide some actual competition to georgia in that sec east division we will see um moving on to another team in the state of florida all the way down south in florida the miami hurricanes have made another one of my favorite hires from this coaching carousel They've got uh, Mario Cristobal and hired him away from Oregon. Um, Miami, after 20 years of mediocre football, mediocre program, they have finally decided that they're going to spend money. And they spent a lot of money on Mario Cristobal to get him down there. But I think it was the right thing to do and to get the U back. Uh, I think he's the best recruiter in the country. I think he's going to assemble a staff down there that's going to be one of the best in college football, and I think I think Miami's on the right path. At the very yeah, least. in college football, you have to recruit well to win well, um, and that's the reason he had success at Oregon. I think Miami is going to offer a much cooler location than than Eugene to recruit to. Um, it's his home. Going- he he's from the from Miami. Play won exactly. two national championships there. He knows the area. It's it's a it's great hire. Um, my only, it's not really a reservation about the hire in per se because the hire on paper is perfect. But my only words that I have or criticism I have is how they got rid of Manny Diaz. I don't think that that was handled very well, um, and it's also kind of uh, gives me a lot of Florida State vibes. Um, to where there's like Miami not fans one... will love hearing that. Well, it, there's not like a person at the helm making the decisions is what it kind of feels like at Miami. It feels like it's a bunch of boosters that are just telling people what to do while there's it's there's a vacuum of power. There's no one there to like funnel the decision. Um, and it kind of sets it sets a bad example for say that Mario Cristobal has to step down for whatever reason. You never know with things like this. Mm -hmm. He has to step down or stop coaching. What happens? Like, is this a desirable job to someone because of how man, to someone that isn't Manny Diaz, that maybe wasn't a coach there, isn't a hot name and, you know, those kind of things just because of how Manny Diaz was treated and how it unfolded that being said that doesn't really factor into the actual like coaching higher grade for me so i do give this an a plus i think it's a great coaching hire but it's something that 
any coaching, anyone making a coaching change decision needs to think about is how you also go about getting rid of your old coach because they really were kind of like, well, if we can get Mario Cristobal, we're going to fire you. But if we can, then we'll keep you. And it's yeah. like, that's yeah. shitty. Yes. Just, yes. just fire him. Yes. I agree. I give it an A plus as well. I think I think Miami, especially in an ACC that's a little bit more wide open than in past Ooh, five yeah. years, I think Miami has a real opportunity here, and I think they might have the guy to 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 bring them back to prominence. Um, Agreed. Moving on, who else? Are we, we're going to talk about. Hmm. Let's go to Oregon. Let's go to Oregon. Mario Cristobal's old job. Um, Oregon is hired. Former Georgia defensive coordinator Dan Lanning as their head coach, and I'm, this is not exciting for me. No, it's not exciting. Also, if I'm Oregon, I don't want anyone with a defensive background at all ever. Um, like that's it what just that's what that's what Cristobal was, wasn't he? Wasn't he a defensive guy? No, he yes, and I, don't care. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. no, he was offensive. I'm pretty sure he's an offensive guy. But regardless, it doesn't matter. Because if I am Oregon, what put me on the map as a team is offense. That's mm-hmm. that's what made fans at Oregon. And so, like, I just don't think – I don't ever think a defensive hire at Oregon is exciting. I'll give this, like, a – I don't know, a B- minus, just because, like, yeah, he's coming from a national championship team and – but here's my thing won't. on that. There's a lot of people praising this hire because he he was the defensive coordinator for what I think is the best defense in the history, one of the best defensive in college football history. Um, that Georgia national championship team is going to go down as a legendary defense. But they had five star after five star, like Shane Beamer said. They had they have five star after five star, and everywhere, everywhere every- on the field. Everywhere. And not only five star, like the top tier best players at pretty much every position. And like not going to lie, I could have coached that team to a top fifteen of all time defenses, and I cannot coach. That's what I'm saying. They were they also weren't running that sophisticated of a defense, so it wasn't like schematically their defense was that's not the reason that they were good defensively. It's because they were loaded. Um so I'm I'm not sold on this um i think i think oregon um might have misfired here there's a lot more the 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 pac-12 is quietly becoming a little bit more competitive we'll talk about usc and lincoln riley coming up here utah is better utah is really good ucla is on 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 the rebound like it, it just feels like it's a little bit more competitive now and i'm not sure if, if dan Lanning will keep oregon growing I don't know that this was a misfire as much as it was who else are you going to get? Who is the name that you're going to bring in that is going to impress like some other teams could? Caleb and DeBoer. There's... I huh? wanted him to hire DeBoer, the guy that Washington got. Yeah. Yeah, and that's fair. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I gave this a uh, C+. Plus. Gonna... Yeah, I give this a C+. Plus. All right. Um Let's talk. Let's go to. Let's go to USC. Let's talk Lincoln Riley. Um, oh boy! So Cody and I had a pretty good discussion uh, last week or the week before about um, transfers and touched on Lincoln Riley and USC a little bit. Um, I think this is a great hire from the perspective of USC. I think this is a, this is obviously a step down in caliber right now from Oklahoma to USC for Lincoln Riley. But from a USC perspective, I think this is this is an A plus. Knocked it out of the park. Um, this is a coup. I don't under, really understand why Lincoln Riley would want to go here, other than the potential of what it could be, and he views himself as the guy that can get him back to that that prestige. Um, but um, so this hire to me, I'm sitting at like it, where from where I'm sitting. If I am Lincoln Riley, yes, I would want to go to USC because one, they have more money than God himself. Um, they have a dick ton of money. That's that's one. Oklahoma has money. Don't get me wrong, and they're going to continue to have money. However, they're about to be in the SEC, and I think that honestly, in the SEC, they are like middle of the pack. They're not as good as they think they are. It's because the Big Twelve 
is not as good as the SEC, frankly put. I think that's um, So, like, yeah, they're upper middle of the pack in the SEC. He's about to, from being top dog, being able to recruit your entire geographical region well and extremely well because you are the top dog. You're always in the playoffs. You're always making these type of um, moves and, and in the news constantly to being literal middle of the middle of the pack and also probably getting talked about how like i don't know some other gr- great coaches that have been hired and then did nothing in the SEC um i think that that's entirely a possibility for for so- whoever is at Oklahoma so going to USC makes a lot of sense to me because money you now don't fair. have to you don't now don't have to convince every single quarterback because like every single quarterback that he's ever had at Oklahoma has come from California. Um, already recruits think, that area very well. He already recruits the area. Now he doesn't have to convince those players to leave. You can just be like, hey, your mom can be at, at every single game and we don't have to break NCAA violations to get her here. Mm-hmm. Um, how's that sound? I agree. Soul. I think that I think yeah I I'm on the same page. I think this is a win for USC, and I think I think this will bring them back to to the relevance that they see. I mean, you think USC is kind of Oregon's been the better team the past 10, 10, 15, 10 years, but USC still in my mind is that flagship program of the Pac-12. Like you think Pac-12, Absolutely. you think USC. It's the historic program. Yes. It's the blue blood program of the Pac-12. There are no other blue blood programs in the Pac-12. I think Washington scratches that surface, but Oregon. not nearly. I think huh? Oregon. I think Oregon's a blue well, blood. Oregon, program. Washington, but I don't. I like. I'm thinking uh, teams that are, have had sustained success through decades. Okay. Yeah. There's not really one of those in the Pac-12. There isn't one of those teams. Um, there isn't the the Ohio State and Michigan. It's just USC for the Pac-12, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yes. Um. So that being said, from USC's perspective with what I think about this hire is I'm not super – like I'm excited about it. I think it definitely improves USC from where they were. Clay Helton just could not elevate this program despite doing well in recruiting and doing well in all other sorts of things and being a really wonderful person, which is what they've said many times, that he's just a great person. Um, he wasn't able to elevate this program. And – while I think that Lincoln Riley is a better coach and will elevate the program, I don't know if it's going to get USC to where they want to be because, frankly, he hasn't taken Oklahoma to where they want to be. Um, he's lost every single playoff appearance he's been in when he's had every single advantage to win those those games. I agree. Um, he should have won one by now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's my little piece of it. Spiel. I'm giving it an A-. minus. I gave it an A plus for a USC perspective. This is a slam dunk hire. I think he might not win a national championship there. I even know that's his. That's the reason he was hired. But he'll be successful. Um, and USC really just needs to be, get back to being a successful year in year out competitive program. So I think he can do that. Um, let's let's jump to Oklahoma. His former head coach or his former home. Um, they have. Uh, hired somebody familiar. They have hired Brent Venables, who spent spent a long time at Oklahoma as the D coordinator for Bob Stoops. I can't remember. It's like 15, 16 years, something like that. Um, hired him away from Clemson. Um, he was the D coordinator there. I think this is a really good hire from Oklahoma. I think the Lincoln Riley stuff probably caught them off guard a little bit. I don't think they were prepared for him leaving um, overnight almost. And I think Venables is a great option. And I think it's a great option for their move into the SEC because I think the problem with Oklahoma, why they haven't gotten across that line in in the playoffs, like we were just talking about with Lincoln Riley, is that their defense is terrible. Defense is terrible. And I think Brent Venables is going to come in and they're going to have at the very least a solid defense. They're not going to be terrible. Um, And with the recruits that they're going to be able to get, I think they can be a defensive force. And they're going to need that when they move into the SEC because the Big 12 defense isn't going to play well in the SEC. So I think I I like this. I absolutely absolutely give this an A-plus hire. Um, I think that uh, if if you were going to be Oklahoma in the situation, 
this is who you wanted to get. Mm -hmm. Um, You wanted someone that absolutely has proved consistency, has been at your program before, knows the program, knows the expectations, knows the fans, knows the area to recruit, but then can also recruit nationally because that's what you have to do at Oklahoma because you can't just pull guys from Oklahoma. You have to be able to recruit Texas. Well, guess what? He's recruited Texas when he was at Clemson. Mm. He recruited Texas when he was at Oklahoma before. He knows these things. He knows how to do it. He knows what a winning program looks like, which, you know, I he's never been a head coach. And we had that same criticism for Tony Elliott. But the difference is his – his uh, program has never, his side of the ball has never dropped off. Yes. Like Tony Elliott yes. did. Um, and that is why I feel much more like this is a slam dunk hire. I do think this is a great hire. I give it an A. Plus. Fair enough. I give it an A plus as well. We're going to speed it up a little bit because we're running a little long. That's what we do. We get it. Um, Ooh, our I'm next. Gonna... What? We are long-winded. Um, yes. We can probably run through quite a few of these. Um, do you want to do Washington State? Yeah, let's do it. I don't know, really know who Jake Dickert was before he got Well, hired. I kind of I kind of called this uh, back when um, – I feel like when we talked about we, – we did an episode on, like, coaching vacancies and who we thought right. we would I, – I said I thought that Washington State was going to hire from within – and that's what they did. They hired their their defensive coordinator, who took over as the interim head coach after Rolovich. Can we say pulled a Rolovich? Can we turn his name into a verb now? We absolutely should. He Roloviched it up um, at Washington State and was selfish and disowned his players. And yeah, and he actually, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a term t- tumultuous situation at Washington State after he left and. Dickert finished the season off and they went three and three. They didn't completely implode. They did all right. I'm not sure that this is going to be an outstanding hire. Washington State's a program that kind of punches above its weight class. So we'll see. I give this a, honestly, I give this a C plus because personally, if I was making the decisions, I would have cleared house. I would not have wanted anyone that was related to Rolovich and that BS selfishness that happened. I would have, been like no we can't have that um obviously we went they went with a different tact and i guess it makes sense because they didn't implode like they really should have yes um that team should have not won another had every game. excuse had every excuse yeah, to implode exactly. and they didn't so and, uh, i mean for I that think, i'm gonna give this a b minus then just because i feel yeah, like- i also give it a b minus just because of that particular and also for washington if he does bad next year guess what you can fire him because his contract's nothing. Yep. Washington All right. State. Um, I'm going to jump to the sister school. I don't know if they appreciate being called that. But, but they do maybe, not. Maybe the big they brother school. Like maybe the big brother. Yeah, Washington. they definitely are the big brother at Washington. Washington uh, made a move. They have hired uh, Kalen DeBoer. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was former Fresno State head coach. This is the guy we talked. I wanted Oregon to hire. Um, Fresno State was very, very good these past couple years. Very competitive. Pulled several, a handful of upsets. Um, I think this is a good hire for Washington. What do you think? A plus hire for me. Um, absolutely. I mean, he's been lights out everywhere he's went. Um, the, even the teams that he's been a coordinator on have elevated above what they should have been. Indiana, he was on that Indiana staff, uh, before their, what was it? Their 2020 season, the 2019 yeah, season was, it was yeah. now the, the COVID season, the 2020 seasons and when they had, were really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, he was, he, he basically set the, the ground for that, that season and, uh, so I do think that this is a great hire. I personally really want to see the Huskies get back to winning. They're kind of a, a team that I, I root for a lot and just really, really enjoy. So um, I, I think that this is a great hire. Also, he can recruit out of California, which is what you have to do when you're in Washington because you don't have such a large recruiting base that you do out of California. I agree. Um, I'll, I'm not going to give it an A plus. I'll give it. I'll give it an A minus um, on this hire. I I'm going to give it an A. Just an. Just an A. Sounds good. Um, 
Let's go to let's go to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech hired Brent Pry after firing Justin Fuente. I don't really know a lot about Brent Fry other than that he was the Pen, Brent Fry. Brent Pry other than he was the defensive coordinator for Penn State and I don't really think that Penn State had an outstanding defense. Yeah, I agree. Um, the only thing that kind of does give me a li- is just regionally, this makes a lot of sense. So you don't really think about Penn State and and uh, Virginia Tech kind of being similar, but they kind of are when you think about just like the area that they recruit, kind of coal country. Yeah. Um, both 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 of those teams recruit coal country really well, um, and the a- Appalachian region, and so. I think that this makes sense. It's not as flashy as some of these other hires, but it's, it's, it it was a safe hire after really Justin Puente was a hot hire when they hired it. It was was a big hire and he just kind of never did anything that they should have done. It's going to be a a smaller contract. So like, if it doesn't work out quickly, then they can kind of cut loose and turn ties and do something more flashy when a bigger name is mm-hmm. raring to bring uh, Virginia Tech back. And, and I think the fact that I'm saying that um, kind of tells you what I my, my feelings about this is. I just it's not exciting. It's not maybe it's, it's a going C to be plus the plus grade. It's a yeah, C plus. Yeah, it, it really is C plus B minus. Like I'm really right on that border there of a. Uh, of a 79.5 so i'll i'll be the the good professor and i will round Round up up. there you go right on a curve and give him a b minus sounds good all right um another power five job was um duke duke after uh letting go of their longtime head coach um blanking on his name right now um david cutcliffe cutcliffe david cutcliffe he was there for a long time. They've hired Mike Elko, who um, was the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M, and um, did a pretty good job there. I guess Texas A&M had a pretty solid defense these past couple of years. I don't know. It's Duke, though. I feel like this is a pretty good hire for Duke, getting the D coordinator for a, a big SEC program. Um, I think in perspective of Duke football, I think this is probably a B-plus hire, B, B-plus hire, but... I don't really know much about Mike Elko, so. Yeah, so Mike Elko um, has a pretty long history, actually, being um, in uh, just defensive coordinator. This is his first head coaching job, and while I don't necessarily think that it is the perfect uh, hire for Duke, I do think it makes a lot of sense just because of his um, history in um, recruiting players similar to what Duke wants in its football players. Higher academic um, standard. Yeah, higher a little bit higher academic standard, which we gotta have a conversation about basketball because how do they get how do they get the dummies in basketball, like the really good people in basketball that are dumb as a box of rocks into the school? Like I don't understand. Um and not do that for football. I just don't understand. Like football is gonna make you so much more money if you're really good at it. Um Duke's known for basketball. But, Whatever. That being said, he's been – he was the bowling – he was the uh, defensive coordinator and linebackers coach at Bowling Green uh, up till 2013. He followed uh, our uh, good friend uh, to Dave Wake Clawson. Forest. Dave Clawson to Wake Forest. And uh, then he was the defensive coordinator in 2017 at Notre Dame. So, like, all three of those, you're recruiting players that are – honestly, all of those teams recruit the same players as Duke. Yeah. Yes. Um, recruit – uh, Duke just isn't as successful as Notre Dame or honestly at this point Wake Forest in getting those players. But um, all of those defenses were solid in every single one of those years. They're solid years. Um, then at Texas A&M, he's been there since 2018 and they've had a good defense. Um, it's not been lights out amazing, but it was pretty good. And then this year they held Alabama to uh, – a very low amount of points. I don't remember what the score was, but they they did a good job against Alabama um, in that game. It was game, like 30. I think they gave up like 30-something. Which is pretty low for Alabama this year. <laughs> um, so I will give this hire a 
B plus. Sounds good. I think we have uh, I think we have two more Power Five jobs that we haven't talked about: uh, TCU and Texas Tech, uh, two Texas schools. Um, TCU. Um, let's do Texas Tech. Texas let's Tech. Do Texas Tech because I think um, I think Texas Tech is I think the uh, athletic director there is a moron. Um, this team that he fired Skip Holtz for. Uh, was the, it was it was Skip Holtz was, no, was his name? No, no, it's Brian Wells. Wells. Brian Wells. Yeah. Brian Wells. My my uh, spreadsheet got messed up. He got fired Brian Wells for ended up winning like five games afterwards with an interim coach. Like this was a good team. They started five and three, and then they fired Wells, Ryan Wells. Yeah, it didn't make sense to me. Like, did did you just you know? Want Brian Wells to get hired into the NFL? Because it seems like what you wanted. Um, not saying he's going to get – that was a Cliff Kingsbury joke. Um, how they, you know, fired him fired and then he got hired as a yes. qualified coach. Because um, he, you know, never actually want, had a winning season or whatever. Brian but, Wells you know. had a better winning percentage than Cliff Kingsbury did. Exactly. So why is he not – why is he not the coach of any NFL team? I. Mm, all right. This is a rant for another day. That being said, I think that everyone at Texas Tech is a moron. They've let every that they've ever had go away, and I wish nothing but the terribleness worst. and and the worst for them. Um, I don't know anything about Sonny Kumbi. I didn't even um, prepare anything on this because I just wanted to rant at how fucking stupid Texas Tech is. Fair enough. Their new head coach, his name is Joey McGuire, and he was the Baylor uh, outside linebackers coach, so he wasn't like even D coordinator or anything. So, yeah, I don't know anything about him. If I have to give him a grade, I guess C. We'll give him a C yeah. for this one. Oh, okay. Cody's giving him an F. I'm giving him a C. I'm a I'm a lighter grader than Cody is. Uh, last last Power 5 school, and then we can touch on a couple group of five if you want before we wrap this up because we're already like 40 minutes in. Um, TCU, Sonny Dykes. Um, so the exit of Gary Patterson, the long-tenured head coach of TCU, brought him to a lot of success. It was an ugly exit. It was an ugly separation um, between the two. Um, but... It seemed like TCU wanted Sonny Dykes all along. He was the SM, SMU head coach. Brought SMU to success they had not seen since the death penalty that they received back in the 80s, I believe. Um, and had a winning record, had the most, had the best winning percentage of anybody since the death penalty at, at SMU. Um, so I think this is, a, this is a good hire. It was an ugly separation between them and Gary Patterson, but I think this is a good hire for TCU. Yeah, I, I agree. If you're going to get somebody, it was it, it, that was the one that made the most sense. Um, so, you know, I I hate that Gary Patterson had to go out that way. Um, it really honestly sucks a lot. Did not in my do him opinion. justice. They did not. Um, for everything that they did for that, for everything that he did for that school, I think they should have let either let him go out on his own terms or wait until after the season to yes. like have that conversation because unfortunately it happened during the season and that's just um it's unacceptable in yes. in my opinion just the way that uh they they did that would um, you rather but, would you rather have that that situation or with what happened with Manny Diaz in Miami which which situation is better in my opinion the Manny Diaz situation is better I agree. I agree. Because at, at, at Miami, the expectations are higher. And uh, TCU, while the expectations are high, the expectations before Gary Patterson was there was were dirt low. Mm -hmm. So, like, I kind of, like, while you may be sick of him, you have to give him to the end of the season to say, hey, we want to go in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But you have to give him to the end of the season. You can't do it the way they did it. Um I'd fire the athletic director. That's two. Um, we we I, end on two athletic directors directors that are on Cody's shit list. Te Texas Tech's athletic director, I think, should be strung up from the light post in, in Lubbock. I would just fire TCU's. 
That was pretty violent. Mussolini. That's that's the way I feel. Okay, fair enough. All right, you want to touch on any of the group of five hires? Um, let's see here. There's nothing like super exciting. I kind of want to want to just like mention Akron uh, hiring Joe Moorhead. I think that's a good hire. Um, I don't know that it's going to give them any success because Akron's been fucking dog water um, the entire time they've been in the FBS, which is surprising. They have the best stadium in the MAC conference by far. Um, they have the best stadium, probably the best facilities, and I have no un- understanding as to why they're so bad they're in the terrible. MAC. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that uh, Georgia Southern. Uh, is an interesting hiring of uh, Clay Helton. If he has the same record that he had at USC at Georgia Southern, they're going to build a statue and make him the president of the university, yes. which is crazy, the the difference in expectations to me. Um, so that's something. Uh, Colorado State Bells, interesting one. Um, I, think it's inter- I think it's good that UMass fired Walt Bell there was that that program wasn't going anywhere wasn't going anywhere and it has been apparent for years um also who is walt bell he's been he was the head coach there for like four years and i literally learned his name when they fired um so so, and they hired don brown who actually was the coach that brought them the success that put them into the fbs he won two fcs national titles there and then um connecticut who i actually think is a little bit more of a sleeping giant. Um, not not like in the terms that they could be like a national championship winner, but I personally think that Connecticut makes a lot of sense if you are a, a Sun Belt or one of those other conferences. They could be like the best team in a group of five conference or a mediocre power five team. Um, that's my personal take on it. Though I don't think they're ever going to join them. Um, football conference, unless it's just for football. Yeah, they, um, they won't leave the B- Big East. They have no, they, they need to stay in the Big East for that. basketball. They they'd have to get like an invitation from like the Big Ten that is like you could never be kicked out of the Big Ten kind of thing. ACC, ACC, like that's what they would have to have. ACC and I could be interesting, like if they develop it. Happening, but I think that Joe Mora is a good coach. He was a Jim previous Moore. coach at, at Connecticut and was the coach that brought them the, the periods of success that they have had. Um, so I think that that's an interesting hire. I, everyone else I don't really care about. That's fair. Enough that's to fair. enough to spend a significant amount of time talking here. Sounds good. All right. Well, that was a classic fourth and long-winded episode that went on for more than 45 minutes. Um uh, so if you're still watching it this time, thank you. First of all, just just thank you. Um, sorry, and, and, and eh, I'm not so sorry. And um, since you're still here, why don't you go ahead and like that, hit that like button down beneath us, leave a comment, tell us what you think, uh, give us some of your grades for the coaching hires, subscribe most importantly, so you can get every one of these 45 minute long winded sessions that Cody and I do once every so often, especially maybe a little less often now in the off season. Um, make sure you follow our Twitter account, which the link will be down below. Both Cody and my personal Twitter's will be linked down below and then uh, Spotify link. And uh, there's another link that's going to be down there and I can't remember it right. TikTok. The TikTok link will be down in the description as well. So make sure you check those out. Go check out all of our content. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you all next time. Love you.